Hey guys, welcome to Code Doc. Today we are seeing the concept parallel depth first search. First of all, I will just give you a glimpse of what is depth first search, then we'll move on to the concept. The depth first search is a searching algorithm uh, usually applied on graph structure. So here I've uh, drawn a structure, it's more of a uh, tree kind of structure. So let's say I have to find a node which is located over here. Okay, I have not mentioned the values to the node, but let's say the value or the node which I want is located over here. So how will the depth first search work? Okay, so uh, we will obviously start at the root at any uh, searching algorithm. And in depth first search, we will pick up the whichever the first connection the system gets. Maybe this one or maybe this one. So in our case, we'll uh, to make the example shorter, we'll just go on to your. Okay, now it has two sides again, either this one or this one. So let's say now at this time it goes over here. Again, this or this, let's say here, this or this, here, and this. Okay, so, so even though it has not yet found its value. So now what it will do, it will go back to the node. It will come back to this node and it will check, uh, are there any more con connections which I have not visited? Then there are no connections, uh, all the connections to this point are visited. Okay, so again it will go back one more step. And now it will check over here. Is there any connection that is not visited by me? So as these both are visited, now it's this turn. So it will go over here again. So uh, there is no further node and neither this is the node which I am searching for. So again it uh, back traces, back traces and it comes over here. Okay, this is visited, this is visited. It comes here, it goes over here. I is it the node which it's looking for? No. So again back tracing. Uh, did this no I mean uh, marked at visited comes over here okay so it checks whether any other connection is available from this node no it's not available so it deletes this node and it comes over here now okay so now is there a node which is not visited yeah this node is not visited it goes here it checks that yeah it's the value which I'm looking for and so we'll get the output that yeah the node is present okay so now this takes a long time, uh, speaking of the complexity, it goes to O of V, it means how many number of vertices, vertices are present, it goes there. But this uh, process can be, uh, you know, the time complexity can be shortened if you use parallel processes. Now parallel processes means what, like if one process is working, uh, may, sorry, many processes are working on the same uh, program or the same operations. So let's say we have uh, processes from P1 to Pn. Okay, now what the main task in the parallel processing is that process allocation. How will we allocate the process and like on what conditions the process might get allocated. So there are two ways. One is static. Okay, and the other one is dynamic. You all might know what is static and what is dynamic. The dynamic means uh, as we move forward with the program or with the operations which are performing, and that time the process uh, will get allocated. But in case of static, the it is predefined that yeah, uh, process P1, let's say the process P1 will only go to the left side, and the process P2 will only go to the right side. Let's assume in that way for the static one. Okay, we are now talking about the static. <coughs> okay, we are talking about the static. Uh, let's just keep the dynamic aside for a bit. So now what what is the problem over here? So yeah, we are trying to achieve a parallel thing over here by you know using two processes. We achieved it. But now the problem here is the P1 only has three nodes. So okay, after uh, it gets com it computes these three nodes, it gets idle. Okay, it does not have any work to do. Whereas process P2 has many nodes as compared to P1 and uh, due to we are using a static allocation, P1 will not get assigned to any other node or any other operations to do and it will remain idle while P2 will be working. So in this case, in this scenario, it's we are not achieving parallelism. Only 
three nodes are being traversed by P1, by the rest, no, all the nodes are traversed by P2. So, moreover, it's a serial algorithm which I first explained to you, where P2 process is going to all the nodes in its uh, subtree, <coughs> and P1 is just visiting three. So, we didn't achieve parallelism uh, actually, we tried to achieve it. But not really uh, we could achieve the goal which you wanted. So now let's see how dynamic allocation works. Okay. So now the thing with dynamic all allocation is. Now let's say I have a process P1 and process P2. Okay. I, have, I will write here process P1 and process P2. So both are in active state right now. Okay. I am talking about the present condition. Active state, active state. Okay. And. Each process will maintain its own stack. Okay, uh, please note it down. Each process will have its own stack. Let's say this is P1 and this is P2. Its own stack, and we know why we are using stack as it is a DFS, and DFS uses stack, and DFS uses the queue. Okay, so now let's say we start with the, the P1 process first, and P2 is also getting executed simultaneously. And in P2, we have three values. And even in P1, we have three values. So after P1 completes its all the three nodes, okay, it gets ideal. Why? Because there is no other node to process. As P2 is assigned over here, it gets idle. So over here, the status of P1 becomes idle. Now what happens is, uh, we also show that the stack gets empty over here. Great. Okay. So now uh, here what happens is P1 gives a call or let's say a message to P2 that hey, I am idle. Do you have anything in your stack which I can work upon? Whenever P2 gets this call, P2 checks whether his stack is empty or not. If its stack is not empty, it divides his stack into two halves. And let's say P1, uh, P2 keeps the down part and it assigns P1 the top part. So this all thing is removed and now P1 gets assigned the top part. This part. It's not compulsory that P1 assigns the top part and P2 the down part. I'm just uh, explaining you guys. So again, this comes in active state and it's working. So this is how we can achieve parallelism in DFS. And that too in a dynamic approach. So here's the difference between dynamic and static approach. Whenever a process gets ideal, it gives a call to the all uh, remaining processes which are active and says that, hey, I am ideal. Do you have any work for me? And so this is how the work gets assigned to all the processes, even though they get ideal. So this is how we can achieve uh, parallelism. Now, what is a termination point? Now you my guys might say that let's say both the P1 is also working, okay? P1 is working and P2 is working. The, <clears throat> and suppose P2 gets the desired value, P2 uh, P2 reaches to this point first, okay? So even though P2 reaches this point, will P1 continue working? No, P1 will not continue working. Whenever the process, whichever process will get the desired value. Okay, whichever process will get the desired value, it will tell all the processes to terminate their work or stop their work right over there as the value is found. And let's suppose the value which I am finding in the graph is not present. Okay, so when will this uh, process, all the processes will get terminated? Whenever the stack will get empty, whenever all these elements get deleted, the stack is empty, the process will automatically get terminated. So this was the whole concept of achieving parallelism uh, in DFS traversal. If you guys have any doubts or if you guys didn't understand any concept which I have explained, you can mention in the comment box. If you like the content, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Stay safe.